guys, welcome back to the hot tea channel where we spill tea left, right, and everywhere in between. In today's video, we are giving you an update in the recent headlines in the hottest tea including Miley Cyrus's plane getting struck by lightning, Machine Gun Kelly staying in cringe mode, Dirty Dom, oh sorry, and Tana making the big, big bucks as well as some pretty surprising drama between Josh Peck and Drake Bell and Dave Portnoy? I don't know, quite a mix we have for you today. But before we get into today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Head over to the Hot Tea Twitter account where you can follow and send us any tea that you might know or any deep dive topics that you would like to hear about. No time to waste, let's spill some tea. There has been long time running beef between child stars Drake and Josh and it recently seemed to ignite again with Josh finally speaking out about the situation. If you weren't aware, Drake and Josh worked together on a show four years, years ago and it became a huge show. But in 2017, Josh got married and didn't invite Drake. Drake tweeted about it, seemingly forgetting that he is a public figure slash celebrity and that it would obviously create some internet drama for people to watch from the sidelines. But he tweeted, when you're not invited to the wedding, the message is clear. True colors have come out today. Message is loud and clear. Ties are officially cut. I'll miss you, brother. Fans of the show were a little shook that the invite wasn't extended to Drake and that the two might not be friends anymore, despite having been on-screen stepbrothers from 2004 to 2007. But of course, it had been over a decade since the show was on air. After the wedding, though, Drake and Josh seemed to clear everything up and be on good terms again, even appearing in a David Dobrik log making jokes about the wedding invite thing. Well, this has all come up again with Josh having recently gone on the BFF's podcast and talked about why Drake was not invited to the wedding. He says that they hadn't really stayed in touch over the 10 years that had passed since the show was still alive and even described the fact that they weren't as close as a dirty little secret. Basically, Josh didn't invite Drake because they weren't that close and hadn't spoken in years, which in my opinion is totally understandable. From what I have read, the wedding was really small and that probably put some restraints on the guests list. Like, we're not inviting all of the people we knew in high school to our weddings unless we're still close, right? Similar situation, I believe. Josh shared that Drake sent some text messages the night of his wedding expressing his displeasure in not having been invited. And the tweets that Drake sent out about how upset he was, Josh says that they were just fake. Josh said, quote, so then he leans in and goes on this press tour about how heartbroken he is and creating this narrative that just wasn't true. Of course, the internet being the internet, Josh received some hate from fans for not inviting this person that everyone believed he was amazing friends with, and Josh said that while he can handle hate messages, being in the public eye, etc., his new wife can't. Josh says that it was hard to have to try and enjoy the best day ever, literally his wedding day, and watch his wife get hate messages on her wedding day because of someone he just wasn't that close with. And he didn't want to be the bearer of bad news by telling the internet that Drake and Josh weren't friends like that. He did ask for an apology for his wife from Drake though and the matter in which this situation went down is unclear as both sides are saying that it happened differently. Josh says on the BFF's podcast that he went up to Drake and demanded he apologize to his wife and says quote, it was the most Sopranos thing I've ever done. Well, Drake's wife spoke out and said that that was all bullshit and that Josh was lying and trying to be a tough guy. The conversation was much more subtle than that, with Josh just nicely asking for the apology and Drake just nicely agreeing to it. They apparently even hung out for the rest of that night. Since Josh's appearance on the BFF's podcast, Drake has reached out to Dave Portnoy to clear up the story and voice his side. Dave Portnoy read out some text and voice messages that he received from none other than Drake himself. Here's what he said to me. Me and Josh weren't friends, haven't talked in years, and we are literally pitching a show together before the pandemic. We were friends all through the show. Sure, we had our ups and downs, but this is just funny. Also, I couldn't have cussed him out the night of the wedding because I didn't know he got married until he posted about it. He straight up lied to you guys. I never texted him cursing. Well, the next day when I see all these people at his wedding, I'm like, like, what? I, you know, and then I, I tweeted. The whole thing is a little messy and honestly a little weird. And also, it's giving Trisha and Gabby beef vibes. Does anyone else feel that? The weird back and forth of we are friends versus we aren't really friends. 
Now, I would love to hear your thoughts on this, you guys, because with some of the research that I did on this, I believe that there are some allegations against Drake, but I'm not going to cover that today because it's just not the topic. Plus, I'd like to read some more on it first, but do you think that that has anything to do with this beef? Maybe Josh didn't want to be associated with Drake anymore, or maybe they literally just aren't that close and it's just an awkward thing where Drake needs to move on or something. But anyway, let's discuss. And in the meantime, let's move on to Miley. Miley Cyrus's plane was struck by lightning this week when she was on her way to a concert that she had scheduled in Paraguay. Miley's plane with friends, family, and crew on board got stuck in an unexpected storm on their way into Asuncion and the pilot was forced to make an emergency landing. Miley was on her way to headline the 2022 Asuncionico Music Festival when this happened and she shared to her Instagram that her and her loved ones were okay. <laughs> We're glad you're okay, Miley. Other headlines for the festival include Foo Fighters, Jane's Addiction, and Machine Gun Kelly. And speaking of Paraguay, the storm and Machine Gun Kelly, it seems that MGK got caught in the same storm but in an almost completely different way. The storm caused some flooding that resulted in the festival being cancelled, so MGK tweeted, the concert grounds flooded in Paraguay tonight, so they canceled our set. But I just ordered a huge speaker, so meet me out in front of my hotel right now. You're getting a show. He started playing about 10 minutes later, and a good-sized crowd had showed up outside the La Misian Hotel Boutique. MGK tweeted saying, and that's how we turn bad news into amazing news. So, I have some thoughts on this, but I figured I would have a quick read-through on the comments on his tweet to gauge the reaction of some of his fans on this as well, and there was a positive response with some people that were local to the area even offering up their venues and sound systems. Some of the positive comments read, your set gets cancelled due to flooding and you find a way to put on a show for the people anyway. This is just one of the reasons why we love you. This is some old school Kel shit right here. I love to see it. And most of them continue with, we love you and this is amazing. But I don't know, what are your guys' thoughts on this? If you're a fan of someone and there's a concert you're going to that gets cancelled, of course I bet the general reaction would be one of excitement and gratitude. But can I be a stick in the mud real quick and point out that, um, is it a little dangerous? I hate to bring up the negative, especially seeing as how it seems like nothing bad happened, and I appreciate the attempt to reward his fans by doing this, but there was literally so soon recently a tragic festival that showed how things like this shouldn't be taken lightly and considering that that this was announced and done in 10 minutes. I feel that we got lucky that things didn't get crazy. A lot of fans were saying that this is punk rock and this is what music is all about and while I do really appreciate how cool this would be, I can't help but just feel a little uneasy about how it seems that maybe not much was learned from the terrible loss that was suffered not long ago. This is just my opinion. They very well could have managed to make sure everything was safe, etc. beforehand and maybe I'm just being a wet blanket, but I would love to see your opinions in the comment section down below whether you agree or disagree. Now, in other more silly and completely unimportant news, after Josh Richards was recently exposed for being a dick to Tana's bestie Brooke, he has apparently made amends. Brooke! This is my favorite podcaster right here. Since he like actually say he didn't know who the fuck. Yes. I, no way that was my word. I go, I'm such a big fan of BFFs. So I literally am such a big fan. And he goes, I'm a big fan of you too. And I got shocked. I was like, oh my god, really? Like, okay, no way. And he goes, no, I'm kidding. I have no fucking idea who you are. Oh, oh that sounds like more of something I was Still a little rude, but maybe not as extreme and a bit more sarcastic than than what was first told. And while on the topic of Brooke Schofield, though, Bestie Tana Mojo is celebrating being one of the top creators on OnlyFans and was just awarded this shiny new $10 million milestone award. $10 million for nudes. What a time to be alive. I did cover Tana's OnlyFans on the Hot Tea OnlyFans series, so you can check that out after this one. I'll link the playlist down below for you guys. Tana shared her Instagram story that she is celebrating this win and even got a message from ex-girlfriend Bella Thorne. Bella and Tana made up a little while back, posting together at a party and seem to be completely cool now, even though things were a bit tense for a while. And speaking of making up with old friends, Tana and Brooke talked about Trisha's pregnancy on the podcast this week and the girls fully support. Brooke says that she thinks it's highly inappropriate for anyone to ever comment on the capabilities of someone being a parent, even if they're an influencer that invites people to comment on their lives. She says that it's just hurtful. Tana says that she is the 
the last person to comment on whether someone is or isn't capable of being a parent, but says that she knows Trisha pretty well and thinks that she'll be great. She's smart. She's funny. She's She has a lot of money and all the resources in the world. There's no reason that she could not raise a child just as I well as think anybody that else. Knowing yeah. Trisha well enough, I do think that she wants to be a great mother and I could see her if she even had anything to like fix. From dirty content to just straight up dirty people, let's talk about the recent news on Dirty Dom. Dirty Dom came out and admitted that everything to do with the crash was a lie or more so that his involvement was a lie. That crash still very much happened, you guys. And a guy's car very much still got trashed because of it, so... I mean, yeah, okay, Dom. But anyway, in a recent video, Dirty Dom boasts that he went viral overnight and that he was wanted and issued fines and made the news channels. But it was all fake and he, quote, tricked the internet. Is this a um, proud moment for you? Is this exciting for you, Dom? It's noon right now. We're about to post the video. I go to my TikTok. I try to search my name. They literally deleted my whole verified TikTok account because of this stuff. Likes to capitalize on the downfall of public figures. And if they don't have a story to attack, they'll just create one. Don't believe everything you see online. Well, yeah, okay, we know. But you're not impressing anyone here, Dom. In fact, you're even more annoying than ever, in my opinion. While he may have tried to do something interesting and groundbreaking and thought that this was a super intriguing thing to do, it just wasn't. People still don't like you, Dom. Apparently, his entire TikTok account was deleted and he reckons that it must have been someone really high up in the company and says that it was all because of this stunt. Just his energy with this, like honestly, get over yourself. Also, how is this the right time for this type of comeback for him? I cannot with this guy right now. He flexed that he got in the wreck while under the influence of CBD gummies and is trying to basically be like surprised, I guess, that everyone believed him? What do you guys think about all of this? Do you think that there is a possibility that this weird stunt with this underlying point has anything to do with the recent happenings with Jeff and David? Is this Dom's way of clutching onto anything that keeps him somewhat relevant? But anyway, that is going to be it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads as we do post new videos every single day. And for now, here is some eye bleach.